In this video, I want to run you through the visual effects and the juicing aspects of our 2D space game. That is to say, all the small subtleties, the animations that we put in to make the game feel and look good. The game demo, because it's not a complete game. I'm going to do this really from the design standpoint, because each of these effects could be covered in a separate tutorial. Um, so it's about, you know, looking at the animations. I'll briefly show you how some of this is done in, in Godot, like very superficially, but let's get started. So all these small visual effects are really important because uh, what we call juicing is really part of the experience that the player is going to have with your game. Like they really contribute to the experience. A good rhythm game, for example, is not the same if you don't have all the small um, exclamation marks, the colors, the things popping with the beat, uh, the sound effects. <coughs> Actually, in this demo, the sound effects are really lacking, but we do have uh, visual cues. So you can see one thing here, for example, when you collect all, every time, every tick that you collect it, you have um, all going from the asteroid you're, you're mining to the interface. Notice when I go back to the station and put down the all that the same happens in reverse, but also you have a bit of popping in the interface and in how the circle goes down and you had two bars uh, turning around. Um, we have subtle things like the station itself is rotating and there are layered animations there, which is a lot of what juicing is. You can achieve a lot with simple animations and simple effects that get layered. So there's a glow. It's just a circle that's coming brighter and then fading out uh, up and down. Uh, that, that's glowing here in the window. The main body of the station is rotating slowly and the ship is rotating with it. And then you have the antenna that also animates. I don't know if it's in sync with the station. It seems it is it's just one animation, but you could do it out of sync. And then it emits these waves regularly to signal that, you know, it's producing something. And it seems to do that at random. You then have these blue areas. I'm going to undock and go down. Notice the tweening here. So it's elastic. Uh, when you enter the, the area, so it pops and it has this elasticity. It's literally the elastic uh, twin, twin easing that's at play here. And so that indicates on anything that can dock. Notice that you have three circles, not just one with a flat color. It's a design choice that works with this game, but um, every detail is being taken into account, right? And so when you leave the area, when you enter it, you want it to pop because you want the animation so it catches your attention, but at the same time, you want it to be visible almost instantly so that the player knows exactly where the docking area starts, right, for gameplay reasons. But when you go out of it, the animation is a bit slower. It's subtle, but there's a bit of a difference. Elastic gives you a bit more of a punchy, more violent uh, animation. Well, when you go out, uh, it's probably a back uh, easing, back easing out, I think. And uh, this is going to overshoot your keyframe, your, so the, the scale here, it's going to scale up and then back down. Uh, that's the back easing. Okay, that's it for the station. Notice the stars in the background. They really breathe life to this otherwise dead universe. And the background is just a flat color. The life bar, if I go towards enemies, well, maybe I'm going to cover the asteroids. Uh, when you see the asteroids rotate, they rotate randomly. They have random start rotations and randomized scales. They come into clusters and uh, they have also these docking areas, of course. You can also notice something. I, I think I have to go back to the station actually to show you. Notice that Every time I start moving, there's that shockwave, that deformation that happens. Uh, we use that deformation also when firing this weapon, the, the plasma gun. Uh, this one has a different quality to it. Like when you move, it's a shockwave, but that's very sharp. So it's, it's creating some sharp lines, right? To say, I have my thrusters 
uh, going out and I, there's a slight delay notice it like I start there's a shock wave there's maybe 0.1 second delay before the particles start to appear it's just the time it takes for them to um, like it takes for you to move away from one of the, the particles but when I just press the key once you don't have these particles because you don't have enough speed yet right so we make copies of the the ship using a particle system there again uh, that are fading it's a simple particle system okay so deformation also when you fire of course and then we have the laser that doesn't apply any deformation at the moment it just gives you that insane glow uh, that is covered on the channel in the one minute laser tutorial uh, let's see the enemies oh i got killed too fast but um, they are not exactly smart, they are pretty aggressive. It's going to restart the game for me. I'll try to move, they're probably, while well, they're going to arrive, yeah. They, um, the enemies go to the juiciest, like the most interesting um, cluster. And so, there you go, look at the life bar. Every time I, I take a hit, it flashes, and I want to get into, yeah, I'm in a critical condition now. So it's it's constantly flashing. Also, the color of the life is uh, different, you know, based on how much like hull or shield you have left. And so uh, it's blue at the start. It slowly becomes pink and then becomes a brighter red at the end and starts to flash. Um, and I think that's about it for now. I could talk about the explosion when we kill an enemy or we get killed. So I'm going to fire the laser. Um, the explosion is a bit harder to, to cover like that, um, but it has a layer of four or five particle effects. I don't remember exactly. We can go look at the scene right now. I'm going to stop the animation. We use an animation player to, to play it. And you can see that it has one uh, scraps particle. Let's see when they are emitted. Yeah, they have slight animation offsets. But the scraps are these, um, let's say, curves that emit out of the explosion. And if I play the animation once, right, uh, you can see they emit once with a slight time offset that's defined like by hand in the animation. But um, because each of them is randomized, every time you play the animation, they're going to be at the same time offsets, but they're not going to be at the same position and angle and not of the same length. So um, it makes them random enough. So we didn't have to code uh, randomness if you want. We have what else we have four actually fewer than i thought uh, or remembered rather we have um the fireball so this is the main explosion here and then the sparkles are the small dots behind it if i hide the main explosion you can see we just have a few dots being emitted and finally we have the smoke that's the longest animation and for each of them, what we do is we uh, trigger the emission for some time in the through the animation player. So this is literally selecting the animation, um, the particle systems, and ticking or unticking the emitting checkbox. And so we let the particles emit for the systems emit for a certain amount of time. I think one that would be interesting is the world environment, again covered in the, or showcased very briefly in the laser tutorial, but this one's very interesting. So when you add a world environment node to your scene, you can then assign it an environment uh, resource. It It's the same type of resource as the default environment that can define the color of your background and pass processing effects that you apply to your game. Fog is only for 3D, but you can use some things such as the glow. And the glow is going to take your rendered image, so the, the image of your screen, and based on a certain value threshold, is going to uh, blur that area, basically. Uh, it's going to blur that color, and it's going to apply it in additive mode. So, the thing is, it only works in 2D if your background mode is canvas. 
uh, the canvas being the image that gets rendered in 2D, I guess. So the render of the main viewport. Don't quote me on that. Um, and so once you set your mode to canvas, the glow is going to take your final screen render into account to do so. You can use HDR uh, tones to trigger the glow. So the thresholds you see here is um, the value, the let's say the color value that is going to trigger some glow, some of that blurriness appearing. And if I go to the laser, let's go to the laser beam. We don't have the environment here, so it's not going to glow in this uh, part of the game. But so we, we've put the um, glow settings such that with regular colors, uh, the glow triggers. But if you want only some parts of your game to glow and not uh, any white on any character or something, you want to untick the HSV mode on colors and turn on the raw mode. And you can see that now the sliders, our original RGB values that were capped at 255, now you can go much farther than in base one, one corresponding to that 255. It's actually always a value of one. Um, and you can push the sliders up to have much brighter values than your screen can render. Uh, you will see that very quickly the shapes turn white and based on the tone mapping settings that you're going to use on the environment, going back to it, so uh, the tone map here and um, also on your glow setting, you will be able to better visualize these colors into your editor. The advantage of that is that you can really control, for example, so if I save the laser beam, it should update in the game, and now you see it's completely overblown. But what's interesting at this point is I can increase, no, it's not the HDR threshold, it's the HDR luminance that I have to reduce. Okay, so I can make my very bright HDR color not so bright anymore, I just glow a bit. I have to increase the HDR threshold, which is going to be the minimum value that's going to trigger the glow. And if I play the game now, the laser is going to trigger the glow, but the background stars not anymore. And with that, uh, I guess I'm going to call it a day. I want to invite you to check out the source code. You can find it on our GitHub. The link's in the description. Uh, please start the repository to help more people view that game, maybe contribute. But you can also learn from the source code. There are comments in there and we can always add more. And that is it. If you have any questions about what I said in this video, please let me know in the comments below. But with that, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. Let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.